Today we are looking at leak code number 238. It is a question called product of array except self. Okay, and so there are two, let's take a look at the prompt here before we jump into our strategy. So given a number array nums, we want to return an array answer such that the answer at the ith index is the equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums at ith index. And the product of any prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to fit in a 32-bit integer, okay? So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see that the product of 4 times 3 times 2 is 24, which we have it here. The product of 3, 4, and 1, excluding the 2, is going to be 12. The product of 1, 2, and 4 is going to be 8. And the product of 3, 2, and 1 is going to be 6, excluding that 4. Okay, here we can see that everything is zero except for that zero because if we multiply any number by zero, it's going to be zero. So we have zero, zero, nine, zero, zero. And then we do have some follow-ups here. Could we solve this in linear time complexity without using division? Okay. And could we solve this in constant space complexity? The output array does not count as, uh, as extra space for the space complexity analysis. Okay, so let's think about this. There is an intuitive way to approach this problem that's not too bad, but we have to use division. And then there's a non-intuitive way to solve this that doesn't use division. It gives you much better performance, but we, you know, uh, you, uh, it's just not very intuitive. So we'll go, we'll cover both. We'll cover both of these. So let's go over the intuitive approach first. With this question, we have to account for three different edge cases, okay? So one of the things we have to look at is if there's more than one zero in the input array, then every single number in the output is going to be zero. We can either create a new array, fill it all with zero, or we can just replace everything in the, in the input array with zero because everything will be zero. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we have an input of one, two, zero, five, seven, zero, and nine. Okay, so the product of anything multiplied by zero is gonna be zero. So if we're at this zero, we're still gonna hit a zero right over here, and that's going to turn everything into zero, okay? Similarly, if we hit this zero and we exclude that, we're gonna still have this other zero here that's gonna take the product of whatever else that we have and turn it to zero. And everything else, because there's a zero in the equation, it's also going to be zero. So all we have to do for the first edge case is just filter out all the zeros and check, do we have more than one zero? If we have more than one zero, we just return the array. We just go ahead and replace all the values in our input array with zero and just return that. Okay, so that takes care of the first edge case. Now, what if we only have one zero? Okay, well, what we want to do is we want to filter out this zero. So we'll have minus one, one, minus three, and three. And then we want to get the product of this. Okay, in this case, it's going to be nine. We'll call this product. And now that we have this product, we just go ahead and scan our array and we say, is this value zero? It's not zero. That means that when we try to get the product of everything else, it's going to hit this zero and that means we're gonna get a zero there. Okay. Is this value a zero? It's not a zero, so that's gonna be zero. Is this value a zero? It is a zero. That means we have to get the product, which we've already calculated, by filtering out that zero and just replace it with nine. Okay, moving on, we'll check, is this value a zero? It's not a zero, we'll replace it with zero. And if this value is not a zero, we go ahead and replace that with zero. And that will solve for that, for that instance, if there's one zero in the input. Okay, so now what do we do if there's no zeros in the input? So let me just go ahead and clean this up here. Okay, and we have an input of one, two, three, 
and 4. So we made it past. We realized that there's no zeros in it. And so now we need to get a product of everything um, without the, without the current, current value. Well, we can do this using division. So we want to get the total product, which is going to be 24. We're just going to multiply 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we'll just call this product. And this is going to equal 24. Now, all we have to do is just divide this product by the ith value and replace the number. So here, 24 divided by 1 is going to be 24. i increments over here. 24 divided by 2 is going to be 12. Okay, i increments here. 24 divided by 3 is going to be 8. And i increments here, 24 divided by 4 is going to be 6. Okay. The only problem with this is, is that we have to use division. And that's one of the follow-ups that said we can't use division. So if we cannot use division, then how do we solve this? Okay. Well, before we get to that, what is our time, time and space complexity if we did it this way? Well, we have to make a few scans to the array just to check if there's zeros. And then we have to do another scan and replace all the values. So our time complexity is linear. It's going to be O of n on time. Okay, what about our space complexity? Well, we have to create, worst case, we have to collect all these zeros and put it in an array an auxiliary array to count the zeros, okay? So because of that, our space complexity is also going to be O of n, okay? Which isn't bad, which isn't bad. It's much better than the brute force way where we take one and then get the product of everything else excluding that and do that on each element on each iteration. So here we can get linear time and we can get linear space but we're using division. So now, now let's take a look at how do we do this without using division. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to create two auxiliary arrays. Okay, and we want to call one left. And what this array is going to hold is everything, all the product sums to the left of that index. So starting with one, there's nothing to the left of this one here. So this, this is always going to start with one. We're going to initialize it with one at the zeroth index. And now what we want to do is we want to fill in the rest of these values, almost like using a greedy approach. Okay, it's just going to, it's a dynamic way of doing this. So we're going to do one times one, which is going to equal one. Then we're going to do two times one which is going to equal uh, 2. We're going to do 3 times 2, which is going to equal 6. Okay, so now we have all the products to the left of that index. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for the right. And it's just the opposite. Instead of initializing with the 1 here, we're going to initialize the 1 at the end. Okay, and now what we're going to do is I'll just change the color here so it's a little bit clearer. This is our one here. We're going to take this four and we're going to multiply it by one and just follow that same pattern. So four times one is going to be four. Okay, we're going to multiply this three by this four. So that's going to be 12. Okay, and then we're going to multiply this 12 by this two and that's going to be 24. Okay, and so lastly, what do we want to do? Now we just want to combine our left and right. So we're going to multiply 1 by 24. I'll change it to green here. And we'll replace it into our input array, and we'll change this to 24. We're going to multiply 1 by 12, and we'll change this value here and set it to 12. We're going to multiply 2 by 4, and we'll change this value and set it to 8. And lastly, we're going to multiply 6 by 1, and we'll change this value and set it to 6. 
And now you can see we have achieved our goal of our result. It is the correct result without using division. Okay, so this is a very elegant way of doing this. Uh, it's you know using a little bit of a dynamic programming approach, but it solves the problem in a very elegant way. Now I, I think it's really hard to come up with this in you know interview setting, but I think if your interviewer gives you a hint or leads you in that direction and you're familiar with kind of using two arrays and using a dynamic approach, then you can really impress someone by coming up with the solution um, in an interview. So let's take a look at time and space complexity. Our time complexity is going to be O of n, okay, because we have to do some scans over the array, but it's only an n number. We don't have to do it relative to the size of the input. Okay, so our time complexity is going to be linear. And then our space complexity, we do have to create these auxiliary uh, arrays, but we're not returning them. We could delete them. So, you know, you could argue this is constant space, but technically I'm going to, it, it is linear space. So I'm, we're going to say uh, O of n space. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in the code. Okay, and so what do we want to do here? We want to create a left array of nums.length and then we'll just fill it with zero initially and then we want to set left at zero to one okay we want to do a right array we want to do it at nums.length and fill that with zero. And then we want the rightmost value, the rightmost value to be one. So we can do right at right dot length minus one equals one. Okay? And so now we have to do a few scans over this array. So let's start with the left. So we're gonna say for let i equals one. We're gonna start at the first index of our nums. And we're going to say i is less than nums.length and i++. And so for left at index i, what do we want to do? We want to take nums at i minus 1 multiplied by left at i minus 1. Okay. So what we're doing here is we have this 1 initialized we are at this ith index in left, and then we're gonna get the nums minus one times the left minus one, and then go ahead and fill in that new value there. Okay. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the right. We're gonna say for let i equals uh, right dot length minus two where i is greater than or equal to 0, and i decrements. Okay, and now we're going to say right at index i is going to equal right at, you can just keep this consistent, nums of i plus 1 multiplied by right of i plus 1. So again, all we're doing here is we're coming to the right and we're starting here. Or actually, we're starting here. Okay, so it's going to be uh, the length minus 2. And we're taking the length plus 1, which is going to be the 6 here. And we're multiplying it by whatever was in the right, which is 1. And then we're filling in this, um, this current i index. Okay, and so lastly, all we need to do is combine it. So we just say for let i equals zero, i is less than nums dot length i plus plus. And here we're going to say nums of i is going to equal left of i times right of i. And then we just return nums. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And we're 
good. I believe my internet is a little slow, so it's taking uh, some time. But we can see we got great performance here. Beat out 94% on space and 65% on uh, time. This is really inconsistent though. You know, every time you click this, it's something different. Now we have 96%, 98%, so. But I think we make really good time and space and we get a very optimal solution using this dynamic approach. So that is lead code number 238, product of an array except self. I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see everyone on the next one.